So here's a little puzzle. Given this piece of code, can you figure out the order the numbers will be locked? Now, if you haven't tried it yet, pause the video and, and give it a go. Okay, so I posted this question on Twitter yesterday and asked folks to, to vote on the answer. So before we continue, a big shout out to these guys who read don't reply and replied anyway. Thank you very much. Oh, and a special place in hell for these two who continue to spoil things even after I'd asked them not to. I'm not bitter about it, but I shall be tweeting them the key plot twists for every major movie and TV series for the rest of my life. Anyway, okay. 58% of you said the answer was three, one, two. And congratulations to those folks for being part of the majority, but they are wrong. Uh, and to be fair, it's probably what I would have said, you know, before I actually looked at the spec for this. The correct answer is three, two, one, as 27% of you said. So how does this work? Well, let's run through the code while keeping track of the JavaScript stack, the microtask queue, and of course, the log. We start by executing our script, so that goes onto the stack. The first thing we run is the promise constructor. Now, while a lot of promise stuff is very async, the function you pass to the promise constructor is executed synchronously. So that goes onto the stack. By the way, the spec calls this function the promise executor. So if you're a wrestler looking for a name, uh, there you go. Anyway, the first thing we do is resolve that promise. And, and this is where I had to double check the spec. When a promise is resolved, it queues a microtask for each reaction callback attached to the promise, so all of the, the dot then callbacks. But right now, we don't have any of those. We haven't called dot then for this promise yet. Then we call dot then on the resolved promise, so that queues a microtask for that callback. Microtasks aren't processed until the JavaScript stack empties, so we'll get onto that a bit later on. Now we're done with our promise executor. So that drops off the stack and our call to the constructor returns. Now we can call dot then. As before, calling dot then on a resolve promise queues a microtask. Then we get to this line and we log free. And so that's our first answer. And I think most people agreed on that. Now we finished running our script. So it shifts off the stack. Now our JavaScript stack is empty. So it is now microtask time. Microtasks run in order. So we start with the uh, promise callback for the inner promise and that means we log two. Now that's done, it falls off the stack so we can run our next microtask. And that means we can run our outer promise callback. We log t, which is the resolve value, which is one. And that's us done. But seriously, if you got this wrong, I don't worry about it because it's really subtle. In fact, let's take a look at a very similar piece of code. This is the same as before, but the stuff in the promise executor is wrapped in a promise callback. And this does change the order of things. Here's what it looks like. As before, we put our script on the stack. We run the promise constructor, therefore the executor callback. But this time, we just call dot then on this resolve promise. So we're going to queue a microtask to handle that. And that's us done. That's the executor over and done with. The constructor returns, and we call dot then. And this is where things start to get different. Like This time, we're calling dot then on a promise that hasn't resolved yet. And so we don't queue a microtask at this point. We move on. And then we log three. So, you know, same first answer as before. And that's us done. That's us done with the script. So the stack is now empty. So it's microtask time. And there's only one item on there. It's the one for the promise callback inside the executor function. So we're going to run that. First thing we do is call resolve. And as before, this queues a microtask for each callback on the promise. Last time we didn't have any, but this time we do, as we've already called dot then. So we queue a microtask. And then we call dot then on this resolve promise, so we queue a microtask for that as well. And now we're done with this promise callback. We're also done with the associated microtask, so it's on to the next one. And this is the microtask for the outer promise. So here we log t, which is one, so that goes onto the log. And now that microtask is done, it's on to the next one. And this is where we log two. And that's it done. Microtasks run when the JavaScript stack empties, and promises queue microtasks when callbacks are added to a settled promise, but they're also added when a promise settles for any callbacks that were added before that. Right, I hope that made sense. Uh, that's why the answer in the poll was uh, three, two, one, but with a very subtle difference, it becomes three, one, two.